Quantum mechanics was initially developed to understand very small systems. Uh, we are talking about atoms, subatomic uh, structures as well. But then, of course, people started to apply it to larger and larger systems, to collections of atoms, to molecules, and so on. And in fact, now, we think that quantum mechanics is pretty much universal, namely, it should really apply to any object um, in the universe. Uh, the main feature of quantum mechanics that distinguishes it from classical, from the Newtonian physics, is that objects can exist in many different states at the same time. So you can have an atom that exists here, in one location, and there, in another location, all at the same time. And this is really the key feature of quantum mechanics. And it can be more than two locations. You can make an atom exist in a multitude of locations. And this, of course, is true for a collection of atoms. It's true for particles of light, for photons, and so on. Um, so th this main feature is, is the feature that we would like to exploit. And we would like to really exploit it in terms of technology. Let me explain the, how the, the quantum property of being in many different states at the same time actually has a huge technological uh, promise. Uh, the basic idea is that if you can have a collection of atoms existing in many different locations at the same time, that's basically like having a, a computer, only a single computer, but now it occupies different locations simultaneously. So you can run one type of computation in one location, you can run a different type of computation all at the same time in a different location and so on, depending on how many locations you can really control. It's all about the control of a quantum system. So you have quantum bits and they're spread out in many locations and each of these locations effectively behaves like a different computer. So you can scale up and do a massive parallel computation just by having one, one quantum computer, which could be the equivalent of the equivalent of thousands of, of classical computers. Of course, what's really tricky is to prepare all of these atoms in exactly the state that they exist in many locations at the same time. And there is a huge worldwide activity where people are trying to achieve exactly this. All of these approaches, however, are really um, bottom-up approaches in the sense that people take a single atom then they encode one quantum bit of information into this atom. And then they try to control the atom to be in many different states at the same time. And it's even hard with a single atom to do this. Uh, this was really done uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago for the first time. And then people try to insert the next atom into this and add another qubit and so on. And effectively, um, we can maybe go up to 10 10 quantum bits at the moment, but no more with any existing technology. So, of course, the, the, the bottom-up approach has severe limitations in this case. Our approach um, in the Oxford Martin School is a novel approach in that sense, and it's very different to this in the sense that it's really a top-down approach. So what we want to do is we want to take a system that's already complicated, that has many atoms, like a complex organic molecule, for example. And we want to see what kind of computation, what kind of quantum computation already goes on in such a system. So we'd like to hijack this kind of computation and use it for our own purposes, and maybe try to reverse engineer it and learn how this is done in a complex system. So rather than adding one qubit at a time, we take many qubits and we see how much of this is really genuinely quantum mechanical in the sense of being in many different states at the same time. And what we would like to do now is I'd like to basically take you to one of our labs and show you one of these um, six actual experiments and explain it in a little bit more detail for you. I'm Tristan Farrow. I'm one of the James Martin Fellows here in the Physics Department. Uh, my background is in experimental physics. Uh, and in particular in quantum optics, and this is um, the sort of equipment I work with here. Uh, we're trying to implement uh, some of the ideas um, uh, that Vladko Vedral uh, described, um, of trying to probe complex uh, quantum systems uh, using light. So the idea is to load these um, single molecules into optical microcavities, uh, and then the idea is to probe these single molecules in, using single photons. And the reason they need to be in a microcavity uh, which is essentially um, consisting of two mirrors um, and the molecule sits in between them 
um, is so that the um, electric uh, field or the light field interacts better, um, more strongly, uh, couples more strongly to, to the molecule. Um, so uh, one of the challenges that we're dealing with when um, um, exciting single molecules is that they're very, the, the emission uh, from them is very dim. Um, the micro cavities allow us to extract that light much more efficiently. Uh, further afield, we'd like to entangle a couple of molecules using these uh, sitting in two separate micro cavities. The holy grail is to entangle several of these single molecules sitting in several micro cavities uh, arranged in, um, in arrays, uh, 4 by 4, 10 by 10 ideally, uh, but that's uh, really very, very ambitious. Uh, within the scale of uh, the time scale of uh, the James Martin project, uh, we're looking to entangle at least two, potentially four, um, uh, of these micro cavities in these arrays. So I'll hand over to my colleague David uh, Coles, who um, will tell you a bit more about the setup um, up to my side here. Hello, I'm David Coles, also a James Martin Fellow uh, here at Oxford University. And this is the experiment we'll be using to observe the quantum effects in um, the organic molecules. So in order to observe the quantum effects, we need to cool the, the molecules down to extremely low temperatures. This cryostat allows us to, to cool them down to 4 Kelvin, only a few degrees above absolute zero. Um, and inside the cryostat, we have this very sensitive uh, stage, which allows us to position the molecules so that they overlap exactly uh, with a cavity. What we've built around the cryostat is essentially an extremely sensitive optical microscope which allows us to image the, uh, the, the cavities and the molecules um, in the same way a, a, a standard microscope would but at the same time excite them uh, with a laser and collect their emission and, and study that emission for signatures of quantum behaviour.